Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today it's all about jump shots. And we're going to be taking an in-depth look at this, which is the McDermott Jump Trainer Cue Ball. Now, as you may well have guessed from the name, this is a training cue ball specifically designed to help you learn to jump. Sounds like a great idea, right? Let's take a look. So first of all, let's take a look at some of the technical details for this particular ball. And so our McDermott Jump Trainer ball here uh, is made in China. And unfortunately, no, it's not a phenolic resin ball. This will just be made of some kind of poly resin. But we did put this on our calibrated scale and this weighed in at 5.985 ounces, which is an excellent result on weight. And likewise, we did measure this using our calibrated micrometer and this came in absolutely spot on. This was 57.2 millimeters, which is virtually bang on two and one quarter inches. And they do claim in the advertising blurb for this ball uh, that it is a regulation size and weight ball. And having looked at those results, it definitely is. And with regards to quality on this ball, uh, this ball does have some uh, printed markings, which we are going to be looking at in more detail. Uh, when we show you how to use this ball. But overall, it does have a very nice appearance. It's got a nice high gloss finish to it. And it is kind of a, a, an ivory kind of color. Uh, it's very much a, an off-white. It's got a slight yellowy tinge to it. Uh, but overall, it looks uh, pretty nice. And with regards to price, uh, you can pick this up for $42 uh, on Amazon. And we will be adding Amazon links uh, for this particular product into the video description below. So if you are interested in picking one of these up, Please be sure to support us here at Average Joe's Pool and please do use those links. And it's worth noting that whilst this isn't the uh, cheapest training ball in the world, it does seem to be somewhat unique. There doesn't seem to be another training ball on the market currently, which is dedicated solely to one job and one job only, and that's teaching you how to jump. So now we know what this little thing is, is it actually going to work? Let's take a look. I wonder what it's like. Doing it on a snooker table. Doing what? So when it comes to learning how to uh, jump with this ball, uh, it's not going to be the case that you can just uh, open this ball out the packet, put it on the table and start jumping. There are a few basics to the jumping process that you need to know. And thankfully on the McDermott website, you can find uh, an instructional video on how to uh, use this. Unfortunately, it does look like it was made about 50 years ago. It's in the old 4x3 format, very grainy and very old, uh, but it does contain some really useful information. So you're going to need to know some basic stuff, like uh, how to uh, position your uh, bridge hand, uh, what kind of angle you're going to be hitting the ball and all that kind of stuff. And that's where that video comes in really handy. And as we go through this video and we show you how to use this ball, we also will give you a few basic tips on the jumping process. But however, this is primarily a review video, and so we can't go quite as in depth as we'd like and so definitely be sure to check out the video on the McDermott website and to help you out we will add a link to that instructional video on McDermott's website into the video description below. So in a nutshell what this ball essentially does it takes the guesswork out of the positioning of the ball and the correct angle of attack and of course knowing exactly how and where to hit the cue ball in a jump shot is one of the key elements in getting this thing to actually jump off of the slates. But as I mentioned before there are definitely several factors that you're going to need to know before you attempt to jump the cue ball and those include your stance, your bridge and your stroke. So the way that this uh, jump training ball works is essentially you've got three different colored dots across the top uh, with corresponding text for each. And the green one there is the uh, standard jump. And then we also have two other options. We have the uh, jump draw shot or the backspin shot and the jump follow shot or the forward spin shot. And if we look just below that, we have a large uh, McDermott uh, cloverleaf logo bang in the center there. And that's going to be the target that you're aiming for when you're doing your jump shot. And likewise, uh, either side of the uh, large clover there, you've got two uh, smaller ones. And these are for left and right masse shots. So this is to add left and right spin onto your jump shots. So a couple of quick tips for you. A great thing to visualize when you're looking at doing your jump shots is to imagine that there's a ball bearing that's dead center in the middle of your cue ball. And that ball bearing just so happens to be exactly the same diameter as the width of your Q-tip. And then the other thing to bear in mind, as you would have seen on the McDermott uh, training video, is that your uh, standard jump shot ideally wants to come in at an angle of 45 degrees. And so what we do with this uh, cue ball is uh, these colored dots. Uh, we've got the green one here, which is the standard jump shot. What you would do is you would align that so that dot is facing straight upwards. 
And then you're going to be offering your queue up at 45 degrees to the McDermott target. And so essentially your queue is going to be pointing straight towards that imaginary ball bearing in the center of that ball at 45 degrees. And then when you take your shot, that energy is going to be forced through the center of the ball. And of course, the energy has to go somewhere and that's going to result in this ball wanting to jump off of the surface of the cloth. So that's how the basic standard shot would work. Uh, but we also have options here for the uh, draw shot and the follow shot. So if you wanted to do the uh, draw shot, for example, what you'd do is you'd make sure that the uh, red dot in this case is the one that's facing directly upwards. And then you'd still be hitting exactly the same target, the uh, large uh, McDermott Clover logo. And if you imagine what we've done there from the uh, standard jump that we just did a minute ago, the uh, green spot there, you've actually rotated this ball around a little bit. And of course, that's going to change the angle that you're facing into the ball. And so the theory is your cue is no longer directly facing that imaginary ball bearing that's in the center. It's now coming in slightly underneath it. And so when you put that power through the ball, that's going to result in that ball launching with a little bit of backspin. And likewise, of course, it's exactly the same for the follow shot. You twist it upward uh, to, so you've got the, uh, the blue one facing upward. And now you're hitting above the center of that imaginary ball bearing. And that should result in forward spin. So that's the basic theory behind this, and the theory is absolutely sound. So provided that these markings are accurate, uh, that should give us the correct angles of attack into this ball. You saw the whole picture, you covered all the angles. So we will be putting that to the test in uh, just a minute. Slightly more complicated are these left and right masse shots, which are these two really small targets either side of your main McDermott logo. And jump masse shots are definitely a more advanced uh, jump shot, uh, so you don't want to be tackling those straight away. But again, the theory uh, behind those is, of course, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding some side spin onto that ball as well. So there's quite a lot of uh, different shots that this uh, ball is capable of uh, teaching you. And it appears to be quite a good little tool uh, to kind of get you used to the uh, the different angles. This is the day when we separate the men from the boys. Now there's one feature on this uh, cue ball that definitely is a little bit confusing, and that's this kind of little uh, red line you've got coming off of the uh, main McDermott logo. Now the written instructions do say that you should use that uh, red line to help you align your uh, cue to get the correct angle. When you're actually looking at that, you're trying to work out how can I actually get an angle out of that red line because it's kind of coming off sideways off of that little logo. It kind of doesn't make much sense. And unfortunately, when you do go and have a look at the uh, video that McDermott have made uh, showing how this cue ball works, uh, there is a section in that video that does explain uh, the use of this red line. However, on the uh, video, it still really isn't clear uh, what this red line is actually for. And it, the, the guy kind of explained it. What you do is you take your spots and you kind of put your ball upside down and you kind of somehow get an angle from it uh, in that way. But watching that didn't make any sense at all. And if you were to put that dot on the table, that actually shows you the angle. So because that didn't make any sense, I kind of went away and I had a look at this and I tried to kind of make some sense of it. Because after all, someone's uh, purposefully designed this in a certain way to be able to uh, uh, calculate that angle. But it's not very obvious at all how this actually works. And so it took me ages to work it out. And I was thinking about different uh, ways of aligning the cue to it and different ways of looking at it and uh, to try and get that angle. And I, I think that I've got the uh, the correct method for getting this, um, which was intended by the person that designed this ball. I don't care what anything was designed to do. So I think the theory behind this is that what you do is you uh, put that ball uh, in front of you with that McDermott logo facing uh, straight at you. And you put your, uh, if you're doing a standard jump, you want that green spot facing directly upward. And whilst maintaining that position, looking straight at that ball, you're going to bring in your uh, jump cue. This will be the uh, tip of my jump cue right here. You're going to bring it across in front of the ball and you're going to change the angle until it aligns with the, the uh, diagonal line coming out of the side of the uh, McDermott logo. For me right there, it'd be about that angle. And then what would happen is if you change from a standard um, uh, jump shot to let's say a jump follow shot you would twist the ball forward so that the blue spot is now facing up then you bring your cue in again and looking at it from that angle it would actually come in at a slightly shallower angle and and then as you turn it that way the angle will become a little bit steeper and then as you turn it all the way up to the, the last one which is your uh, jump uh, draw shot that's going to be even more of an angle so what that's essentially doing is it's giving you those uh, three different angles that you need to elevate your cue uh, for the three different types of jump shot however it is kind of a, a clunky system it's only a short little line you've got to align with and what you're kind of doing is you're kind of lining your cue up and going okay getting a feel for that uh, 
that angle of elevation, okay, yeah, that's about the angle that I want. And then obviously you need to turn that cue round and play that same angle uh, directly into the cue ball. So is it an effective method? Well, like I say, it is a little bit clunky, uh, but at least it does have a tool there uh, for adjusting the uh, different angles between the three different shots. We have to remember at the end of the day, this is a training uh, product. So it's, uh, it's actually quite handy uh, that if you're new to jump shots, this thing is showing you that you are gonna have slightly different uh, cue elevation depending on the uh, what type of shot it is you're trying to do. And so in that regard, although it's a uh, very kind of a uh, clunky and is not a fantastic system, at least it's there and it's gonna get your mind thinking about the different cue elevations. So I think it is quite effective because once you've learned how to uh, jump using this ball, of course, you're gonna get rid of this. You're gonna stick a standard cue ball in there. And once you do that, uh, you're automatically going to be thinking about the, uh, the different elevations depending on the type of uh, shot that you're trying. So it all sounds great in theory, sounds easy, right? Let's give it a try. So first and foremost, you are definitely going to need to get a jump cue. It's no good at all trying to do jump shots with your regular full length playing cue. And secondly, because uh, jump shots can be particularly harsh on your pool table cloth, it's always a good idea to always keep your old cloth, never throw your old cloth away, and to cut yourself a little square of your old cloth if you can, and put that underneath your uh, ball, uh, underneath your cue ball there. And what that will do is it won't affect the, uh, the angle of the jump in any way, shape or form, but it will protect your cloth. And the last tip when you're first learning jump shots is don't overwhelm yourself. Don't immediately put an object ball in front of there and start trying to jump that. It's best to start with something small. What I've got here is just a lid of a, uh, a plastic lid from, uh, I think it's from a pill bottle or something like that. So you can just start small and do a basic jump over something like that. And you can build that up yourself and jump slightly bigger and bigger things until you're ready to jump the full object ball. So let's give this a try. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the standard uh, jump shot. So I'm gonna have the green uh, spot facing directly up towards the sky. And I want that McDermott logo facing back towards me. Then I'm gonna put my target about three balls distance away and we'll give this a try. Now a complete uh, disclosure on this, um, I'm quite comfortable doing uh, jump shots. If you've seen any of our videos before, uh, you probably would have seen quite a lot of jump shots being done. And so I'm, I'm comfortable with this process anyway, but I'm just gonna kind of show this to you in this kind of its most basic form uh, because I need to test this product as if I'd never done a jump shot before. So I'm gonna try and forget everything that I already know about jump shots and use specifically the markings that are on this ball. And hopefully these will correlate to what I already have in my head to what makes a jump shot work. Let's find out. So what I wanna do is hit that McDermott logo dead center with my cue at 45 degrees and a nice sharp uh, speed. You're not looking for power, you're looking for speed. And you wanna push the cue all the way through the cue ball. So there's a very, very basic jump shot. So that seemed to work okay. So let's get an actual uh, ball on the table and try that. So now we're comfortable jumping over a single ball. What we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce an object ball on the other side of the ball that we're jumping. And we're not gonna worry at all about aiming. We're not gonna be trying to uh, pocket this ball. All we're trying to do at this next stage is jump our training ball over this ball and hit that ball. So let's start with the easiest one, the standard jump shot. So that seems to be working. So next we're going to uh, try the same thing. Uh, this time uh, we're looking to get a draw shot. So what we want to do is we want to jump this ball, hit this ball and bring the ball backwards. So next up we'll try the jump follow shot. So what we're looking to do, jump this ball, hit that one and the ball will still have good forward motion. So next we're gonna test the, uh, the masse. Uh, we can try the uh, left masse. Now we've got a shot here where this ball is the obstructing ball, it's too far away to jump. This one I can jump, so I wanna jump this one with left spin, it's gonna drift me over towards the number two ball, the blue ball at the rear there. So now we've reversed the, uh, the balls here, so we're gonna try our right masse. Again, our shot up towards our number four ball is blocked here, so we have to jump straighter and then hope we get the, uh, the masse to pull the ball over towards the number four. So 
I've been playing around with the McDermott Jump Trainer Ball uh, for a good few hours now. Uh, so first of all, what did I like? Well, the first thing is obviously going to be the size and the weight. Uh, they said this is a regulation cue ball and it absolutely is. It hit the WPA regulations for both size and weight. So in that regard, it's absolutely spot on. I do also like the fact that you've got all the different markings on here for your different types of jump shot because they could have designed this just to teach you one kind of basic jump shot just to get you uh, jumping the ball off of the uh, off of the slates. Instead of doing that, you know, they have put the effort in. We've got a standard jump, jump draw, uh, jump follow, plus, of course, the left and right masses as well. So it's definitely nice to see uh, that you can do quite a few variations of jump shot all on the same ball. And another thing that I really liked about this is the fact that uh, they have this uh, red line on it. The system, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is, is a little bit clunky, but it gets you thinking about different uh, cue elevations. And what they could have done with this ball is they could have uh, set the uh, angle of attack always at 45 degrees, so the cue elevation wouldn't change between the uh, three different types of main shot. And having a 45 degree uh, angle of attack, uh, of course, is fine for your standard jump and also would work for your, uh, your jump uh, draw shot as well. Uh, but it wouldn't be as effective for your jump follow shot. The reason being is when you turn that cue ball up to do your jump follow shot, uh, your target is actually slightly above that kind of imaginary ball bearing we have in the, uh, in the center of that ball. And so what you're effectively doing is you're striking over the uh, top of that kind of imaginary ball bearing. And so when you do that, at that kind of 45 degree angle, the, the uh, cue ball can almost get trapped uh, between your cue and the uh, slates. So it can be much more effective when you're doing a jump follow shot to come in at a slightly shallower angle to help avoid essentially trapping the uh, cue ball between the tip of the cue and the slate. And so what they've done here is they've kind of designed this in the kind of technically correct way. So rather than just saying hit them all at 45 degrees, they are trying to teach you uh, the different uh, cue elevations to hit at the correct angle. So that's a really, really nice touch. Negative, negative, negative. Don't worry, we'll catch them sooner or later. So we've looked at the positives, but were there any negatives when it comes to our McDermott jump trainer ball? Unfortunately, yes, we do have some negatives. Uh, my first uh, minor niggle with this uh, is that this isn't made from a phenolic resin. Now, I can absolutely appreciate it's probably a lot harder to get these made from phenolic resin than these kind of poly resins uh, because there's not very many people that actually make the phenolic resin balls. And the main problem that we have where with this being a, a poly resin rather than a phenolic resin is uh, generally these poly resins are a little bit softer and so they're often harder to jump and that's definitely the case that we found on our jump trainer ball when we compare it to a phenolic resin ball. Now that said it is perfectly capable of jumping obviously when you're doing standard jump shots just jumping over one ball you're not really going to have any problems at all. But if you're doing more extreme uh, jump shots, this thing might struggle a little bit. So we decided to put this in a head-to-head -head test against a phenolic resin ball. Uh, what we have here is the standard uh, Aramith Pro Cup uh, cue ball, the spotted one, which is a uh, phenolic resin ball. And on our non-phenolic resin jump trainer ball here, uh, we managed to clear uh, 15 balls, uh, which is a full set, and we were struggling to get over the 16th ball. So then we reverted back to the uh, Aramith uh, Pro Cup uh, cue ball, and uh, yeah, we did um, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, 19, 20, uh, 21. I think we were uh, struggling on the 22nd ball. So we managed uh, to jump 15 with this and I believe uh, 21 with this. And so purely from an efficiency standpoint, the phenolic resin ball definitely is a far better jumper than the non-phenolic resin. However, we do have to remember that that is a somewhat uh, unrealistic test. Uh, there's not many uh, weirdos such as myself that are going to be trying to jump 20 balls. But on the flip side of that, it does show us that our uh, non-phenolic resin ball here doesn't jump quite as efficiently as our phenolic resin ball. Now, the next thing uh, to mention, uh, which is also a like and a dislike, is this little kind of red line system that they've got on here uh, for adjusting the elevation of the cue. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, yes, the system is uh, very clunky, but what was quite annoying is that nobody seemed to actually explain how this red line works. There is a paragraph of instructions, which is uh, on the ball and also on the uh, packaging, and that just says to align uh, against the red line, but doesn't kind of tell you how to do it. And when you go to the uh, official uh, video for this uh, on the uh, McDermott website, uh, that kind of old one that's made about 500 years ago, again, there does seem to be some confusion. It doesn't make any sense at all about putting these dots upside down and, and having to look at the line that way. That didn't make any sense at all. So you are somewhat kind of left in the, uh, in the lurch somewhat to actually try and work out for yourself what this red line actually does. 60% of the time, it works every time. 
However, I'm pretty sure that I've worked it out and hopefully this uh, video will be helpful for you in that regard. Uh, but even then, there's a, an extra little niggle when it comes to that little line. And that's because that angle is somewhat uh, all, to, all to do with your uh, perspective. So when you change the, uh, the angle by uh, moving it backwards and forwards, obviously the, uh, the line, the angle of that line is going to change slightly. But likewise, you could also argue, well, the Q elevation, if you're a slightly taller person, you'd be looking down at that from a slightly higher angle. And so that will change the, uh, the Q elevation. Whereas if you're very short, you'd be looking at it from a lower angle. And so the same line would give you a different uh, Q elevation. And so this can kind of only be based on a kind of a, an average height person. So again, it is kind of clunky, uh, but as, as I mentioned before, uh, it is a positive in some ways because it's good that it does actually have it there because it is going to get you thinking about the Q elevations. And one thing uh, I found uh, a little bit tricky uh, when we were uh, playing around with this ball is these, uh, these two little uh, masse uh, marks either side of the main one. Now, I think personally, they may be set a little bit too wide. Uh, so what I found is if you're uh, aiming the uh, center of your cue uh, directly at that spot, uh, it's quite uh, possible to uh, get a miscue. Now, for my money, and to get these shots working effectively, I had to move the cue in slightly uh, from where the uh, marking is on the ball. I cannot see this working with those marks being that wide apart. So I'll do it much closer to centre. I'll do it there. Go on then. And once I did that, I found that it's actually uh, quite effective and worked well. Uh, but definitely uh, trying to hit those centre cue was resulting in quite a few miscues. And my next little niggle is going to come for the uh, print on this uh, ball. Now, it's difficult when you're doing fine markings on the ball uh, such as this, uh, because you, obviously you can't engrave that, that effectively does need to be printed onto the surface of the ball. When you've got something that's uh, printed, of course it does open itself up for wear. And although we've only been using this uh, ball for uh, a few hours uh, of testing here, uh, we do have uh, some uh, considerable wear uh, starting to appear on the centre of our main McDermott logo. But of course, saying that, we do have to remember that this is a training ball. This is a training aid. This is not something that's designed to be used permanently. You know, this ball is just uh, designed to be able to teach you the basic techniques. And once you've got a handle on those techniques, you're going to be doing all of your jump shots, most likely with your standard cue ball. And so this is not a product that needs to last uh, for 10 years, like you might uh, expect from a standard cue ball. Uh, this is something that, you know, you're only probably going to be using for a few months. So in that regard, yes, it's a shame that we are seeing some wear, uh, but remembering we're not, not going to be using this uh, forever, and so it's probably fit for purpose. And my next little niggle is going to be the, uh, the instructions. Like I said, there's some uh, tiny, minute instructions uh, printed on the rear of the ball there, and uh, we do have the instructions also printed on the uh, back of the packaging. And of course, one paragraph of uh, text isn't really going to be effective at teaching you how to jump the ball, because there are many other factors that you need to consider. So you need to have a basic kind of understanding of uh, different uh, stances, uh, how to uh, elevate your bridge and all that kind of other stuff that comes with jumping the cue ball. And so as a 100% standalone product, no, you couldn't just take this out of the packet, read that little bit of text on there and start jumping the cue ball if you've never seen anyone jump a ball before. So in reality, you do have to view the uh, instructional video that McDermott have got on their website. But even when it comes to that video, again, we have another little niggle there as well. Because on the uh, packaging for this cue ball, uh, McDermott actually provide a URL to uh, view that video. And that is mcdermottcue.com forward slash jump train. However, currently when you go to that page, that video doesn't actually exist there. But you can actually find the uh, video if you look on the product page on the McDermott website for the jump trainer ball. And I will be reporting back to McDermott to let them know that currently that video is not appearing on the link that they provide on the product packaging. And McDermott do seem to be super hot on things like that. So hopefully by the time that you see this video, when you go to that link, it will be there, present and correct. You'll see what we will see. But as I mentioned before, it's not really a standalone product because you have to actually go online and watch that video. It would be nice uh, if there was a full instruction manual that's actually included with the product. And when it comes to uh, training balls in general, uh, Aramith make quite a few training balls. And on some of their training balls, they include essentially small books uh, that are included with those balls. And they retail at similar prices uh, to our McDermott ball here. And so if uh, Aramith can do it, I don't know why McDermott can't. So it really would be nice to see an in-depth instruction manual going into the packaging of this product. So it would be a complete standalone product. But that said, even if there was a book in it, I'm sure that many people would actually prefer to go and watch a video anyway, especially in this day and age. Okay, tell people to 
read books. But of course, if your link doesn't actually work, then you can't watch it anyway. But hopefully that will be resolved. And my last little niggle on this product is going to be price. The current price on the, this product uh, on Amazon uh, is around $42. When it comes to um, training cue balls, uh, if you have a look on Amazon, most of the kind of generic ones, uh, the ones that come with the uh, standard markings for, for English, the kind of red and white stripy ones, uh, they come in typically at kind of $20 to $25. And likewise, those are non-phenolic resin. And when you come up to this kind of price, when you're kind of in the kind of $40 to $45 range, uh, then you're kind of competing with the uh, Aramith training balls, which are phenolic resin, as I mentioned before, do tend to come with very in-depth instructions as well. But, and this is a very big but, this product does seem to be completely unique. There doesn't appear to be any other uh, training ball on the market at the moment that's dedicated solely for teaching you how to jump. So yes, it could be argued that uh, maybe this is a little bit pricey, but on the flip side of that, you're getting something that's unique that currently you can't get from anywhere else. And I think for most people, if this is effective in teaching you how to jump, then it's probably $42 well spent. So although I think a fair kind of retail price on a product such as this would probably be around the $30 range, I can absolutely appreciate we are looking at something that's a little bit unique here. And we also have to remember this is not a generic product like those kind of red and white stripy balls. This is a genuine McDermott product as well. So it's time to award the McDermott Jump Trainer an official Average Joe's rating within the Training Aids category. So first of all, we need to score it for features. And although it's a fairly simple training aid, McDermott have tried to pack in as many features as possible, including three types of jump shots, plus the Massé jump shots, and even the slightly clunky Q angle alignment line. So for what it is, there's not really much more that they could have added. So we'll award a 15 out of 20 for features. Next, moving on to ease of use. The ball itself is actually very easy to use and the markings are both clear and concise. However, you do need to familiarize yourself with the basics of jumping, including stance and bridge elevation. It would have been nice to have in-depth instructions within the packaging, but thankfully McDermott include an instructional video on their website to help you along. And there's nothing too complex here. Just watch the video and you're ready to start trying your jumps. So we'll award a 15 out of 20 for ease of use. Next, we're on to effectiveness. And this is definitely an effective little tool. It gets you thinking about different angles and how to strike the cue ball. And it shouldn't take most people very long at all before they're doing their first jump shots. In my opinion, the Massé markings may be a touch too wide apart, but only by a couple of millimeters. A small adjustment and you're good to go. So will it actually help you learn jump shots? Yes, it will. So we'll award a 17 out of 20 for effectiveness. And so now we need to score for quality. And unfortunately, this is not a phenolic resin ball, which is definitely what we'd like to see at this price point. Additionally, we did notice some wear to the print after just a few hours of use. But on the positive side, it did meet the WPA regulations for both size and weight. So we'll award a 13 out of 20 for quality. So finally, let's take a look at value for money. And with a current price of $42, it's definitely not cheap especially with its poly resin construction rather than phenolic resin. But we do have to remember that this is a completely unique product and it has been well designed and thought out. And at $42 at the end of the day, it is still very affordable. So we'll award a 14 out of 20 for value. So adding all of these scores together gives us an official Average Joe's rating of 73 out of 100 a strong score for a very functional jump training ball. Hey, they probably thought the Geiger counter was his heart. So in conclusion, is our McDermott jump training ball actually any good? Well, yes, it is. I think it's quite effective in teaching the, uh, the basics of a jump shot. And I think most people using this will definitely be able to start jumping their cue ball. Now, as a, a product, do you actually need this? Well, the simple answer is no, you typically don't need any kind of training aid or training device. You can learn how to do it, of course, using standard equipment. You don't need a special training aid to help you, in this case, learn how to jump a cue ball. But that said, the whole point of a training device is to help you along the uh, process. Maybe it'll make that process a little bit easier to, uh, to learn. Maybe it'll get your mind thinking in a certain way, or maybe it'll make the uh, process a little bit quicker. So do you need it? No, of course you don't need it. You don't need any training aid, 
but that's not to say that training aids aren't a useful device. And as I mentioned before, uh, yes, I think it is a little bit on the uh, expensive side, but this is a unique and effective little tool. So should you buy the uh, McDermott Jump Trainer Ball? Well, the simple answer is yes, if you're first learning how to do jump shots, or maybe it's a, a shot that you're a little uh, bit apprehensive about, then absolutely a jump training uh, device such as this is absolutely worth its weight in gold. And we will be adding uh, Amazon links uh, for the uh, McDermott Jump Trainer Ball uh, into the video description below. So if you are interested in picking one of these up, please, please be sure to help support us here at Average Joe's Pool and be sure to use our Amazon links. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful or entertaining for you. If it has, can you please take one second out of your busy schedule just to be sure to hit that like button before you leave us here on YouTube. And likewise, whilst you're here, please be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We've got loads more great pool related content just waiting for you to check out. And please also consider hitting that subscribe button for us. And so best of luck with your jump game. Hopefully you'll be able to take your jump shots to the next level. Suck on this, you son of a bitch. <laughs>